This lecture will talk about the use of functions in C. A uh, very important concept. It's basically a way of encapsulating a bunch of instructions and giving them a name so you can refer to them again and again. So uh, we'll talk about functions, and we're going to need these for Arduinos too. They're, they're very well used. Functions are very useful. OK, so a function, uh, like I say, a function is a way of encapsulating a group of instructions. That's the main thing it's for. So if we look at the top, we've got two examples of code. The top, we've got a main. And it just uh, it executes these instructions. It has three variables, x, y, z. And it assigns y equal to 2, z equal to 3. It performs some operations, y equals y plus z, x equals y, so on. And it prints x. So fine, simple. Three real instructions plus the definition of the variables. Now then below that, we have another example, uh, that a program that does the same thing as a top, function, top main. Okay? In the, the program down in the below, you got this new function called foo. So there's a main there. If you look at the main down near the bottom, you see this main. But it doesn't have the code that we just had. It changed it. All it does is it says foo, open paren, close paren. Now then, look, looking above it, you see we've defined this function called foo, void foo. And that function called foo does everything that the main did before. In fact, it has basically the same code that the main had. We, put that, we took that same code, we put it into this uh, foo. Now, and now what happens is, so we've defined that into foo. So we've given a name to those instructions. And every time we want to execute that sequence of instructions, we just call foo. So we see where it says function call. We just give the name foo, open paren, close paren, to let it know it's a function. And then you call it, and, it, and that set of instructions happens. Okay? So the two programs you have up top, the, the one you have up top, the main, or the one you have at the bottom, the foo, with the main, those two do exactly the same thing. The only difference is that the instructions in the top version, the instructions that do the work are in the main directly. And in the bottom, the instructions are in this function foo. And then that function foo is called from the main. But they do exactly the same thing. Now, you might ask, what's the benefit of this, right? Uh, right off the bat, one benefit is if these operations that foo is doing, uh, these, these set of uh, instructions, if these are something that's done over and over and over again, many times in your code, it, rather than copying it over and over and over again into your main, it is much more convenient to write a function that does those instructions, and then every time you just you call that function. So now notice in the, my main, when I wanted to execute those instructions, I just wrote, I called foo. Foo, open paren, close paren, and it executed those instructions. Say foo was something that I did 100 times in my code, right? Rather than writing all those instructions over and over again 100 times, I just call foo 100 times. So it just reduces space right there. It makes the code simpler and easier to understand. Another thing that I did not cover, that I didn't mention here, which is important though, is that the naming of the functions is very important. Now I'm calling it foo, which means nothing. But most of, when you write these functions, you want to give them names that have meaning. Right? So for instance, maybe Fu was performing a Fibonacci or something, doing some kind of exotic calculation. Say it was taking a derivative. Okay? You wouldn't call it Fu, you'd call it derivative. Right? And then just looking at the name, you could you say, oh, it's called derivative. It must be taking a derivative. And you wouldn't have to think, as a programmer, you wouldn't have to think about the details of what goes on into taking, goes into taking a derivative. You just know, look, I call this function derivative, and derivative is taken. Right? And this is much like the advantage you get from using libraries in, uh, in, um, in Arduino, right? Like we showed this uh, last, last module where we're talking about the Ethernet controller, right? And there was a connect function. And this connect function, you as a programmer, you don't have to know all the details of how connecting happens. You just call connect and connecting happens. Same thing here, if you give a good name. So it's important that the name shouldn't be something generic like foo, but it's an actual name that has meaning, like connect. Connect is cl clear. Oh, I'm talking about connecting on the internet, right? I'm an ethernet controller, right? So you give it a meaningful name, and it can help make the code easier to understand. So that's basically what a function is. You're grouping a bunch of instructions and giving them a name so that you can reuse them. You can call them over and over again, and it's sort of a shorthand. The name is now a shorthand for that sequence of instructions. So that's what a function is. Now, there are more aspects to it, and we'll talk about those right now. But notice that you have to define a function before you can use it. So if you look in the bottom here, we got, whoop, we've, sorry. If you look at the bottom here, we've got this function foo defined, and then we call foo, right? So uh, you've got to define the function and then call it. Functions can take arguments. So data can be passed to a function. Now, if you look at the uh, example on the left, that's what we had in the last slide. 
And in that case, you're calling foo, and foo is, you know, when you call foo, it executes the instructions in foo, but it doesn't pass any data to foo. There's no data to pass to foo. Foo has all of its data internally. It has int x, int y, int z. Y is equal to 2, z equals to 3. So all the data it needs is inside foo. It doesn't need data. But if we look on the right, we've changed the definition of the function. <clears throat> so take a look at, actually, let's look at the main first. In the main, we, where we call foo, in parentheses, you say foo 2 comma 3 in parentheses, where on the left, there was nothing in parentheses. Now we're passing it the number 2 and the number 3. Okay? Now, why are we doing that? What we're doing is, if you look at the foo, foo's definition now, in, when you define foo, it says void foo, and then in parentheses it says int a comma int b. So that's telling you foo is going to take two arguments. One is going to be called a, one is going to be called b. So when you make the call in the main where you say foo 2 comma 3, a equals 2. A is assigned to 2, and b is assigned to 3. And then foo is executed. And if you look at this, even though I've changed the names to a and b, this foo does exactly what the previous foo did. The foo on the right does exactly what the foo on the left does, except the foo on the right takes variables a and b and, and treats them just like the foo on the left treated y and z. Okay? So by calling uh, the foo with 2, comma 3, you, 2 and 3 get bound to a and b, and then it executes, and it does exactly the same as the foo on the left. So this, these two functions, the one on the right and the one on the left, they do exactly the same thing, except the foo on the right takes two arguments. Now you might say, well, what's the benefit of this? Well, one benefit right off the bat is that now this foo function is much more generic, meaning the foo on the, on the, the, um, on the left, that foo, it takes no arguments, so all it can do is have y, treat y equal to 2 and z equal to 3. But now, with our new foo, we can change y and z if we want to. We can say, oh, let's call foo 2 comma 3, or maybe we'll call it with 1 comma 2. And it does the same operation with different numbers. So there are many cases where you have a function where you want to do the same thing with different numbers. Like take, for instance, average, right? You want to average a couple pair of numbers. You could make a function average which averages exactly two numbers, or you could make a function average which takes two arguments and averages whichever arguments you pass. And that makes the average function a heck of a lot more useful because now you can call it with whatever arguments you want. You can use it in a more generic way in other contexts. So, uh, so functions can be passed arguments like that. So it's, you're passing this data to the function, and the function uses that data in performing whatever its operations are. So, uh, and you have to declare, so you pat, the way you deal with arguments is, in the function call, you put the arguments between the parentheses. In the function definition, you have to put the, uh, list the arguments and their types after the name of the function. So up there we say foo uh, int a comma int b, Int a and int b have to be in parentheses, and int declares what type those arguments are, int a, int b. You have to put that in parentheses after the word foo, after the, the name of the function, uh, when you're doing the function definition in order to take arguments. All right. In addition to, for, uh, to uh, taking arguments, a function can return values. Now, uh, if we look at the, the foo on the, the left, that function doesn't return any values, right? It just does its job. Right? And it uh, prints something, and that's the end of that. No need for returning values. Now, if we look at the, func the foo on the, the right, though, this one, uh, actually, let's look at how the structure of the main has change changed first. If we look at the main, it calls foo still. But notice that now we've declared this new variable p, I called it, and I say p equals foo. Now, notice that on the left, I didn't say anything equals foo, I just called foo. But now on the right, I'm saying p equals foo. That's because the foo that I'm defining on the right, it's going to return a value. And I want to assign p equal to whatever value the foo returns. And then on the next line inside the main, I say print p. I print p. So notice that if you look at the foo on the left, it includes the printf. But the foo on the right does not have a printf. Okay? Instead, I've taken the printf and put it into the main. But in order for the main to do the printing, you have, it has to know what it's going to print. So foo computes the value it's going to print, but foo doesn't do the printing. Foo returns that value. So if we look at the foo definition, uh, it has the same top two lines, y equals y plus z, x equals y. But then the last line, instead of saying print, instead of actually doing the print, it returns x. Okay? So the result, the thing that should be printed, is not printed, it is returned. Then the caller, which is main, gets that back. So when that line where it says p equals foo, whatever foo return, the x value, it gets, p gets set to that value. And then the main prints out the p. 
So, uh, so this is another thing that's very useful about functions, have a function return a value. Because then the function can do some job that you needed to do and give you a useful result in the end. Okay? So sometimes functions do have return values. Sometimes they don't. Uh, it depends on the type of function. And we'll get more into that uh, later when we talk about Arduino-specific problems. But so functions can take arguments, and they can also return values. Thank you. Thank you.